Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Don, and I'm joined by Emily with PureWeb. Hi, Don. Hi. Tell us a little bit about PureWeb. Uh, so PureWeb allows developers to distribute 3D immersive experiences. And the really cool thing is that their end users can view those experiences in browsers. So they never have to download or install anything, and they can view them on any device from anywhere in the world. Great. That sounds very frictionless. Do you want to walk us through the architecture? Yeah, sure. So, uh, so the end user is going to have their web browser open, mm -hmm. and they're going to uh, connect to some kind of experience. So it could be something like, uh, like an architecture walkthrough for a, a house. Um, it could be something like a product configurator or even a, a virtual event. Mm -hmm. um, so they're in their web browser, and they press the big button. And the moment they do that, we are going to send a request to our REST API gateway. And that is going to include all of the details about the project and the model that we want to launch, as mm -hmm. well as any details that the system will need to get that game up and running, um, and any other information that it will need to be able to connect back to the user at the very end. OK. So how do the lambdas play into this? So once we've made that request to the API gateway, we've got a little bit of work to do. So we're going to go through a couple of lambdas. The first one is we're going to send it to regional routing. Mm -hmm. So this includes things like uh, the latency, where you are in the world, um, as well as the system load. So if you're in an area that has really high load right now, it might be better to send you somewhere further away and to direct your launch to run um, somewhere further away. Okay. Um, it also includes things like uh, project specifications. So certain projects run really well on certain kinds of backends. Mm -hmm. Others run, on, run better on other backends. Um, so we're going to take all of those decisions and try and make a choice about the best virtual resources to handle this request. OK. Um, after we've made that decision, we're going to move on to another Lambda called the Virtual Connection Lambda. Um, so each of these groups of virtual resources, whether it's a region or a particular project configuration type, um, they're all going to be fronted by a, a Fargate cluster. And this Lambda has the information required to communicate with that Fargate cluster. So we are using a second API gateway, but this one is WebSocket. OK. That allows us to go back and forth between the two. So the cluster can give us updates about how the system is doing, um, what models are running, what the load is like, and we can give it requests to launch certain games. OK, so essentially the Fargate cluster here is uh, representative of uh, kind of the brain of the system, specific to a region. Exactly. And so when, uh, when this request comes in, what's the next step as far as virtual resources as you described it? So I'm assuming that EC2 is going to be the next step? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So uh, we've got a whole bunch of EC2 nodes that are going to be running in the back. Um, those are auto-scaling up and down based on load. Okay. Um, and once Fargate gets our request, it's going to attempt to find us an EC2 instance that will work for our launch. Um, so on startup, the EC2 instance will register itself in Elasticache and okay. say, hey, I'm online. I'm able to run these kinds of models. Um, and Fargate will check that cache to see if we have an instance that's a good fit. Um, once it's found one, it will send our launch details to that cluster. OK. So essentially, this is your control plane. If you need new resources, those resources can be allocated. They register themselves. You can reuse those resources as sessions end. Exactly. And then where does S3 come into play? So there are a couple of things on the EC2 instance. Mm -hmm. So first, we have the service manager. OK. It's responsible for uh, everything that's running in the instance, as well as responsible for registering in Elasticache. Um, and on startup, the service manager is going to go out to S3 and grab any game binaries or other resources that it's going to need to run these launches. Um, once our launch request has hit the instance, the service manager will be responsible for starting up that game that we pulled from S3. Okay. 
Um, now, I also mentioned at the beginning that the launch request includes some details about how to get back to the end user. Um, that's a second microservice that we're also going to start up. So this one is the game, and this one is the streaming agent. Okay. The streaming agent is able to talk to the game. It's also able to go all the way back around and talk to that browser. Once it's got both in communication, it can set up a WebRTC stream, and you've got your game. Excellent. So a couple of observations. Um, everything over to the right here, mm -hmm. virtualization, you can change up your, you know, whatever, uh, whether it's EC2 instances or it's a Fargate cluster, anything can be on this other side. Yeah. And also the ability to have different games or different modules. Yeah. Models, it can be part of this architecture to extend it beyond uh, the current experience. Yeah, for sure. So the power of using this Fargate uh, cluster talking over the WebSocket is that we can uh, build out a, a virtualization backend that runs on EC2 or ECS or any other service. And as long as we have this Fargate cluster that's able to talk back with the rest of the system, um, we can swap them out based on, on different project needs. Um, we also uh, have the ability to to uh, have more than just games running. So the streaming agent is kind of the representative for the game. And the browser is the representative for the user. But you can imagine that you could have all kinds of different representatives joining into the same collaborative environment, um, making contributions, talking with one another. So you could have an IoT device. You could have AI or a chatbot. Um, and that makes the system really powerful. Uh, beyond just streaming a game, you could do things like digital twins. Um, and there are a lot of really cool use cases that we see our, our customers using. Excellent. And this is a very innovative architecture. Thanks for showing us the control plane, uh, the ability to dynamically allocate resources and locate resources, the abstraction that you've created here with your, your resource groups and your virtual resources, very impressive, uh, and the ability to extend the models um, and the agents that you can actually have collaborating in this environment. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you. And thank you for watching. This is my architecture.